Welcome dear students in the lecture of managerial economics. I am going to start chapter 2 of managerial economics course. Optimization techniques. Let me introduce you the basic concept of optimization. Then we will discuss about the techniques of optimization. Which kind of techniques we can use in analyzing the optimal solution of a problem. As we already know that the objective of a business firm is to maximize profits or to minimize costs subject to some constraints it faces. In the last week, I have discussed that the basic objective of a business firm is to maximize profits or to minimize its cost. Maybe the firm wants to maximize profits. Maybe the firm wants to minimize cost. So, this is the basic objective of a business firm to maximize profits or to minimize cost subject to some constraints it faces. We have already discussed that there are different kinds of constraints that a business firm faces in the industry. These constraints may be physical, may be financial. So, in this chapter, we present the optim we present optimization techniques. What do we mean by optimization techniques? Optimization techniques are the methods for maximizing or minimizing the objective of function of a firm or other organization. These are the methods, these are the tools which we use for maximizing or minimizing the objective function of a business firm. Because different firms want to maximize their profit, this is the objective function of the profit of the business firm. The main objective of a business firm is to maximize its profit, this is the objective function. This is the key objective of a business firm. Similarly, another objective of a business firm is to minimize its cost. This is also the objective function of a business firm. It depends on the test of the business firm, whether it wants to maximize its profit or to minimize its cost. So, optimization techniques are those methods, are those tools which we use in managerial economics in order to find out the maximum profit. The first important step in presenting optimization techniques is to examine ways to express economic relationship. This is the first topic which we will cover in this chapter. Methods of expressing economic relationship. As we know that different economic variables are interlinked and interconnected with each other, either by a direct way or an indirect way. So, managerial economists job is to express their specific behavior in the equational form or in a graphic way. So, economic relationships can be expressed in the form of equations 
or tables or groups. It means that if we want to express any economic relationship between two or more than two variables, we need to express them in the shape of equation. We can also express that relationship in the shape of a table. And similarly, we can also express that specific relationship between two or more than two economic variables in the shape of a graph. But selection of a table, selection of a graph or selection of equation depends on the nature of variables, the number of variables. For example, if the relationship between two variables is simple, a table or a graph may be sufficient for the analysis. If the relationship between any two economic variables is simple, straightforward, a may be, it may be a direct relationship or an indirect relationship between the two variables under consideration. So, a table and a graph may be sufficient for the analysis. Similarly, when the relationship is complex, expressing the relationship in equational form may be necessary. If the relationship between two or more than two economic variables is complex, then we can use the equational form. We can express that kind of relationship in equations. So, Expressing an economic relationship in equational form is also very useful because it allows us to use the powerful techniques of differential calculus in determining the optimal solution of the problem. For example, the most efficient way for the firm to achieve its goal. It means that if the relationship between any two economic variables is simple. We can use a table or a graph for the economic analysis. It means that how an independent variable will affect the dependent variable. We can express this specific relationship between the two variables in a tabular form or in a graphical way. If the relationship between two variables is complex, so expressing that relationship in the equational form may be necessary. We must go for the use of equational form for the functions. Similarly, Expressing an economic relationship in equational form is also very useful because it allows us to use the powerful techniques of differential calculus. We have different powerful techniques of differential calculus, which we will be using in the analysis of optimization. As we know that the basic objective of a business firm is to earn more profit, is to earn maximum profit. But how a firm can decide about the level of output? For a business firms to earn maximum profit, the firm must know about the level of optimal output. What is the level of output? that a firm should produce in order to earn maximum profit. For finding the optimal output level, we will use the concepts of optimization techniques. We will use the tools of optimization techniques like differential calculus, multivariate 
optimization. If there are constraints a business firm passes with, so constraint optimization is another topic which we will cover in this chapter. So it means that if the relationship between two variables is simple, we can use a tabular form or a graphic way of its, repre its re representation. When the relationship is complex, we can use the equational form and one other benefit of the equational form is that it allow us to use the powerful techniques of differential calculus. Example of expressing economic relationships. This is the simple example that how do we express economic relationships in the equational form. Suppose that the relationship between the total revenue of a firm and the quantity of a good or service that the firm sells over a given period of time is given by. This is the total revenue equation. For example, total revenue is equal to 100 Q minus 10 Q square. This is the total revenue equation and the basic objective of the business firm is to get more total revenue. In the last lecture, we have also discussed that the total revenue of a business firm depends on the level of output. If the firm produces more output, the firm can earn more profits. It means that there is a direct relationship between the number of units sold and the total revenue that the firm earns. Look at this table. The total revenue schedule of the firm. In the first column, we have output levels. In the second column, we have expression for the total revenue in the third column of this table, we have total revenue of that specific business firm in US dollars. If output is 0, it means that if the firm is producing nothing, the total revenue will be 0. He will not earn nothing. He will not earn anything. He earns nothing. It means that if there is no output, there will be no revenue to the firm. Now, for example, if the firm is producing a single unit of its output, the total revenue he will earn is 90 US dollars. Similarly, if that firm produces two level up, two units of output, he can get 160 US dollars. If he produces three units of output, he can earn 210 US dollars. If the business firm produces four units of output, he can get 240 US dollars after selling the profit, after selling the output in the market. If the number of units produced by the business firm are 5, he can earn 250 US dollars. And similarly, if the number of outputs if the number of units of output is 6, so that specific firm can get 240 US dollars. What does it mean? It means that if the number of units of output increases, 
the total revenue of the specific firm also increases. It means that total revenue of a business firm depends on the units of output produced in that specific industry. If he, if he produces more units of output, he can earn more profit. In other words, total revenue is directly dependent on the units of output produced by a business firm. The more the units of output, the more will be the total revenue. So, this is the basic economic relationship which we are expressing in the equational form, where T r stands for total revenue of a business form and Q is the units of output that a firm produces. Look at the graphical plot of the total revenue schedule. I have plotted the total revenue equation, the total revenue schedule in the graphic format. On the vertical axis, we have total revenue which is in US dollars and on the horizontal axis, x axis, we have output units of output that the firm produces. If we look into the graph of total revenue schedule, we can find that the slope of the total revenue curve is increasing. It starts from the origin. The question is why? why the total revenue curve starts from the origin. The reason is that if the firm produces nothing, he will earn nothing. If Q is 0, it means that the total revenue of a business firm is also 0. That is why this curve starts from the origin. As we move along the horizontal axis from left to the right, there is an increase in the total revenue of a firm. The slope of the total revenue curve is moving in an upward direction. It means the slope of the total revenue curve is positive producing more units will yield more total revenue to that form. Total average and marginal cost relationships. What is the relationship between total cost, average cost and marginal cost? The relationship between total average and marginal concepts and measures is crucial in optimization analysis. We often use the relationship between total average and marginal cost, marginal revenue in optimization analysis. They are very important in optimization analysis because for knowing the optimal level of output, we need to use the concepts of marginal cost and marginal revenue. This relationship is basically the same whether we deal with revenue, product, cost or profit. It means that for the revenue analysis of a firm, we can use the relationship between total revenue, marginal revenue and average revenue. For the cost analysis of a business firm, we also use the analysis, the relationship between total average and marginal concepts. It means total cost, 
marginal cost, average cost. The table is focusing on the total average and marginal cost of a business form. This is the cost analysis of a business form. In the first column, we have units of output, which is denoted by Q. In the second column of the table, we have total cost in US dollars. In the third column, we have average cost. And we know that average cost is equal to total cost divided by output. In the last column of the table, we have marginal cost, which is denoted by MC in economics. So, marginal cost is equal to change in total cost divided by change in output. If we have zero level of output, zero units of output, total cost is US 20 US dollars. The question is that we have zero units of output, then why we have 20 US dollars as a cost? Actually, this amount covers the fixed cost. For example, rent of a building and there are other costs that a firm passes. So, if output is 0, cost will be there. If output is 0, revenue is 0. If output is 0, cost is plus, it means positive. There will be some cost. If Q is equal to 1, if the firm produces a single unit of output, the total cost will be 140 US dollars. The average cost will be 140 dollars as well. And the marginal cost will be 120 US dollars. Why total cost and average cost? Both are the same at Q equals 1. Because average cost is equal to total cost divided by Q. At this output level, total cost is 140 and Q is 1. 140 divided by 1 equals 140. That is why average cost and total cost both are same. And marginal cost is 120. How we can get the marginal cost? 140 minus 20 equals 120. 140 minus 20 equals 120. From the total cost from the next unit, we will subtract the last total cost. So, the new cost is 140 US dollars and the previous cost was 20 US dollars. So, we will subtract 20 US dollars from 140 US dollars in order to get 120 US dollars. If Q is equal to 2, it means that if the number of units a firm produces is 2. The firm total cost is 160 US dollars. The average cost will be 80. It means that total cost divided by Q, total cost is 160 US dollars and Q is 2. 160 divided by 2 equals 80. 
and similarly marginal cost is 20. One sixty minus one hundred forty equals twenty. This is the marginal cost. If output is four, if the units of output that a firm produces is four, total cost is two hundred forty US dollars. Average cost is sixty, and marginal cost is also sixty US dollars. This is something crucial. This is something special for us. This is something special for a business firm decisions. While producing poor units of output, the average cost and marginal cost of a business firm is equal, which is 60. It means that at Q equals 4, average cost is equal to marginal cost. While producing 5 units of output, average cost is 96 and marginal cost is 240. It means that marginal cost is higher than the average cost. This is the graphical plot of cost curves. We have two panels of a graph. Panel A which shows the total cost of a specific form. In panel B, we are showing the relationship between average cost and marginal cost. In panel A, we can see that the total cost curve starts from the vertical axis it touches the vertical axis, but not from the origin. The total cost curve, the total cost curve starts from, not from the origin, but it touches the vertical axis. Why? Because if Q is 0, output is, uh, to, sorry, total cost is positive. It is not the case when total revenue was 0 when Q was 0. If Q is equal to 0, total cost is positive, which is 20 US dollar. That is why it starts from, it touches the vertical axis. This curve is moving in an upward direction. It means that if the number of units of output produced by a business firm increases, the total cost of that business firm will increase as well. Look at the panel B. We have average cost curve and we have marginal cost curves. Average cost and marginal cost curves are represented by the vertical axis and the units of output is represented by the horizontal axis x axis. Both the curves have U shape, both curves are U shaped, but average cost starts from above than the marginal cost. The marginal cost curve touches the average cost curve from below. This is the relationship between the three curves that is total cost, average cost and marginal cost. The total cost of a business form arises as output increases. It means that if the number of units produced by a firm increases, the total cost will also increase. Average cost is the total cost divided by output. It means that AC equals TC divided by Q and marginal cost is the change in total cost per unit change in output. If we change one unit of output, the change in total cost will occur. The ratio of change in total cost and change in 
total output is known as marginal cost. The average cost curve first falls, then rises, as we can see from the graphical plot. The shape of, uh, the shape of average cost is U shape. The marginal cost first falls and then rises. The shape of marginal cost is U shape as well. Both the curves has U shape. Although the shape of marginal cost is U shape, but it reaches the lowest point at a smaller level of output than the average cost. And it intercepts the lowest point of average cost. It means that the shape of marginal cost reaches the lowest point at a smaller level of output as compared to average cost curve. And it touches the average cost curve from below. In the next lecture, we will try to cover the profit maximization by different approaches. Thank you so much for today. Bye-bye.